Okay, well I've got a bit of spare time, so I thought I'd give you uh, guys and girls a quick sort of tour of my studio. Um, in fact, actually it never used to be a studio. It used to be the old village forge. Um, this is where they used to go and uh, shoe horses and, and uh, do general metal work, probably back in the sort of 1800s. Um, and of course, the industrial revolution came along and tractors ruled the world. And that was that for places like this. And so, um, it's just been used as a, as a barn and gradually fell into disrepair and essentially became a ruin. I mean, this is a picture of what it looked like and what we inherited. Um, but about three of, no, about four years ago, um, I undertook to sort of do it up and uh, yeah, over a period of about a year and a half, managed to go and sort of get it into some sort of shape and turn it into my studio, which kind of was the reason why we moved down here. Um, or one of the reasons we moved down here. But yeah, this is a strange old building because it's in three sections. Um, it started off in one section and as the forge grew, they just built on out and then built on out again. So it was kind of ramshackled and uh, yeah, cobbled together and probably would have been thatched at some point. But anyway, um, this is the section of the building that I use as a sort of an editing suite. I spend probably most of my time in this bit. Um, and I do my printing here because we do quite a lot of work for schools and things. So we do team photographs and other stuff. So I have a printer, which I'll show you in a minute, which one I use. Um, computers, normally I have two computers up here, a laptop and a desktop. Um, my laptop's over, in the over the road at home at the moment. My wife's borrowed it. Um, and we have toolkits and other bits and pieces. So yeah, this is the, the general area that I do my editing in and um, I love it, it's great. It's nice and bright and breezy. Um, and uh, yeah, you can get an awful lot of work done here. Okay, well, this is my uh, aging iMac. Um, I think this is a 2013 machine, I think. Um, anyway, it's due for replacement next year. Um, I try and run them for about six years and then sort of move them on. Or this one, actually, I won't move on. It'll go down to the, the main studio area and I'll use it for tethered shooting. But yeah, I, I normally, you, they go on for at least six years, probably probably much longer than that. But it's been a good machine, but it's showing its age now. So that's uh, due for replacement next year, as I say. And uh, what else? We have a Drobo here. This is a quite an old bit of kit as well, actually. This is a 5D. Um, we run uh, three terabyte Western digital drives in here. I think I could just about show you if I can get the lid off. There you go. Um, and this has sort of a RAID ability, so if one of the drive conks out, as it did about three months ago, um, you can pop another drive in and it will rebuild um, the file system and you won't lose any work. In theory, that's what's meant to happen. And actually, in fairness, that's what did happen. So um, I've got really no complaints about it. Some people love them, some people hate them. I don't know, but it, it, it's worked for me. Um, and as I say, I have other backups of my work as well, although I don't particularly use masses of cloud services. We do have um, two other three terabyte drives that I can swap out and uh, we keep those going with all the current work on as well. Um, and weddings and stuff are archived on another drive, which is in a far proof safe in the house. So um, there's about as much as I can do really. One thing you do know about these drives, though, of course, is that they're all guaranteed to fail at some point. But um, as long as you don't lose anything, that's the main main thing there. So that's your Drobo. Um, I'm just going to gently move you around. Uh, OK, there we go. Right, and over here we have, um, you can just about see me here. This is the printer we use. We use um, an Epsom. What is it? Sure Color P800. Uh, this is an A2 printer. 
um, it can take sort of A2 sheet paper and also A2 rolls. Um, it's fabulous. I mean, it's a good little workhorse, the, these guys. I've always stuck with Epson, actually. I've been with Epson for years. Um, I don't know why particularly I stuck with Epson, probably because they haven't really gone wrong too much. But um, yeah, very, very good printer. Um, as I say, it's not used as much. We don't do quite as much printing here as we used to. But um, I do an awful lot of A4s still though, and uh, certain times of the year I can be running out batches of sort of three or 400 prints, and uh, they get framed up and stuff. So I do need my own printer because they're, they're custom sizes as well. Um, and sometimes it's just nice to print your own work up. I quite enjoy printing really. Um, but anyway, these are a good bet. I can obviously do a, a very good printer as well, which is a similar spec. Um, but as I say, I always stick with Epson and, uh, and good they've been to me as well really. Okay, this is a DJI Mavic Pro. Um, this is my drone that I use. Um, doesn't get quite as much use as I would like. I am a trained pilot with the CAA, so I'm qualified and I can do commercial work, but uh, yeah, it's quite hard getting, getting work in for it. But anyway, that's my drone. And this little chap here is called Bones. He's um, a rescue from Spain and we brought him back because he was going to be shot for stealing chickens, but he was abandoned out there. So um, he gets quite stressed when he's left in the house, so he comes to work with me now. And good company he is too. Okay, well, this is the middle part of the studio. Um, it's great when we have kids here because they can sit on the sofa. As you'll see in a minute, we have a television. Um, we have a wood burner in this corner as well. Um, and yeah, so it's kind of more of a breakout sort of area. Um, it's also quite useful to have somewhere to put things uh, like clothes. So when we do work for um, one of our clients does a lot of sheepskin sort of clothing, we can have the racks of clothes here that we're photographing in the studio next door. So um, yeah, it's a really handy little bit of building really this. Um, in here, I can just come over here. I keep all my video stuff um, and my chargers and everything else. So all of that's loaded up um, with stuff. And I uh, say so can have the wires coming through the back of this particular bit of furniture. So all the charging stuff sort of hidden away, which is really rather nice. Um, very useful bit of kit to have this. And I'll just take you over here. And here we have the main part of the studio, which um, I say we heat it with a wood burner, which is really nice. TV for clients to have a look at, watch news or for kids to go and watch some TV on. And my camera cupboard. It's where I keep a lot of my camera gear, all in here. Um, easy access and all that. And a bit of a prop, the old moped here. So yeah, this is the middle part of the building. Um, so this is the main part of the studio that we use for photography. Um, this is where we have our background rolls, um, stands, tables, all the rest of it, blah, 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 lighting. Um, yeah, one of the beauties of this particular building is that it's got such a high ceiling, and I will try and show you that in a minute, but, um, and you might be able to hear it actually because it's very echoey in here. But having a high ceiling is one of the most important things with a studio. It is fab fabulous. In fact, I prefer to have a high ceiling than I would to have actually more space. Um, great if you've got both, um, but as I say, this building we couldn't really change too much because of planning permissions and other stuff. Um, however, it works for probably 90% of the photography that I do, I can do in here, which is absolutely ideal. We are limited with um, big groups. You can't do so many of those in here. Um, but if we have those, we either find another venue or we hire the local hall or something like that. Um, but yeah, like I said, most of the jobs you can do here quite comfortably. Okay, well, this is the lighting sort of that I tend to use for my YouTube videos. Um, obviously, I'm not using it now because I'm showing you, but yeah, normally they'd be used. Um, this is all made by a company called Yongnuo. Um, there's quite a lot of stuff on YouTube about these lights, um, but I will put some links down below for you. Um, I have a couple of YN216s and I have a 600 FL, I think it is. It might be an FL2, I can't remember now, with a diffuser on it. But it's quite a lot of lighting. Great for weddings if you need it uh, or you do that sort of work. Um, yeah, both, and they can all be 
uh, driven by the standard NP batteries, which is the equivalent of NPF970. They're the ones I tend to use. They've got a good capacity. Uh, the bigger light takes two of these. The smaller lights take one. Um, but they're really good, can make them very, very portable. And you can also use AC adapters with them as well. I've got one for this, for instance, because um, that is a very useful light indeed. So uh, yeah, if you do a bit of video and you want to do it on the cheap, this is a pretty good way to go. Okay, well, as you can probably see, we have a boom arm here, um, which is permanently set up. Uh, I use a, a Godox AD360 um, in these parabolic soft boxes. Um, one of the beauties of those things is that once your light's in there, of course, you can't get to switch it on and off and do that sort of stuff. I know you have remotes and things, but it won't switch the light on or off. It's a bit of a pain. So this one is with an AD360 inside is great because you have a long lead coming down and you have the power pack at the bottom of the boom arm and you can just turn the light on and off from there, which is just great. So that's one of the reasons why I keep an, an AD360 around. Um, we have another AD360 in there, two old lights, but I tell you what, if you can pick them up cheaply, and you can in, on eBay and stuff, they're really worth having if you're starting out. Really, really good lights, and um, I thump mine, <laughs> and quite frankly, um, they've been fantastic. I haven't had a fault, so they're really worth having. Then I have a couple of these AD200s, like a lot of photographers now, very versatile light. If you can afford them, really good way to go. Work with TTL with my Sony cameras, or indeed any camera really, as long as you get the correct um, remote for the top of your camera. Uh, and I have put the newer uh, round um, flash heads on top, which is good as well, because then you can just use the magnets in here and magnetically connect mods to it. So it makes it for a very tidy, versatile system. And the latest addition we have is this AD400 Pro here, which again is wonderful for the studio. Um, one of the reasons why I sort of moved away from, I used to have all AD360s. The thing I really missed with them was the modeling lamp. Um, so all the lamps, and these guys all have modeling lamps on, so that's great. So um, I'm really happy with my lighting. I'm really happy with Godox. And as I say, I use Godox, uh, flash guns as well for the top of my cameras for weddings and other stuff. So all my Godox stuff is compatible. It's great. So stands for another one. I'd be a little bit careful of putting expensive lights on cheap stands. Um, I've got, I think, a couple of uh, Elinchrom ones and, and a lot of mine are Manfrotto. Um, Manfrotto are very expensive, really, but they're very, very good, um, very strong. Even the lightweight ones are very strong. But if you are going to simply just go and put a reflector on there or um, something else, a diffuser, then getting a cheap stand sometimes just makes sense. And you can get some cheap stuff off Amazon or eBay, all made in China. But um, I say I wouldn't be putting an expensive light like the Godox AD400 Pro on a cheap stand. I simply wouldn't do that. Tripods and stuff, we have a nice Gitzo here. We have in the studio a big Manfrotto, 028B apparently. Um, I think I got that second hand, but I've put some wheels on it. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, you can now. Um, as you can see, it weighs a bit, but I use that as like my sort of studio stand. Um, it's great if you're doing lots of product photography, just being able to move things around. I love all that. Um, monopod for video. I use a Benro. Um, what is it? It is a Benro. A48FD with a Manfrotto fluid head on it, MVH500AH. Uh, so I'll put this in the description below. Um, that's a great little bit of kit, good for weddings as well. But um, if you want to travel a bit light, that's perfect. Works really, really well. Okay, well, that's about it then. Uh, this is my little studio. Um, I really like it. It's, uh, it's a lovely place to work. I'm very, very lucky to have it. Um, it has helped me get some clients in as well, I think, and uh, it's reasonably busy. I could always be busier like most photographers, but uh, it's just such a lovely place to have all your equipment stored and to go and do YouTube videos in and all the rest of it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, yeah, sort of uh, please subscribe and um, I'll see you all sometime again, I guess. Okay, bye.